Screamin' Centipede just recently opened last month at the brand new Tom Foolery's Adventure Park at the Kalahari Resort in Round Rock, Texas. And this may look like your average SPF Visa spinner at first glance, but it has a very notable addition. This ride includes a hamster wheel car. Screamin' Centipede is one of the SPF Visa Big Air coasters, which is the evolution of the company's successful spinning coaster. SBF debuted their compact spinner at the 2013 IAPA trade show, and since then, that model has spread like wildfire. There are nearly 100 versions at amusement parks across the globe, plus an unknown amount of carnivals. Most of these spinners are the two-loop model, but they offer some other variants like the three-loop model, or the new version found at Jenkinson's Boardwalk. The Big Air Coaster takes the spinner to the next level. Premiering at the 2019 IAPA trade show, the Big Air Coaster is a five-car train. Four of the cars are your standard spinning cars, but the fifth car is a hamster wheel that looks very similar to the vehicles on Knoebel's Looper. The prototype on the show floor was purchased by Craig's Cruiser's Family Fun Center in Michigan, and Tom Foolery's received the second version, which they have named the Screamin' Centipede. This is the signature ride at the new Round Rock Amusement Park. The coaster is located smack dab in the middle of the park, so the spinning cars and hamster wheel add a lot of kinetic energy to the park. The crazy hamster wheel in particular is mesmerizing to see, since it's such a rare sight to see on a coaster. Tom Foolery set up the queue intelligently. They have separate queues for the spinning cars and single hamster wheel. This ensures that guests get the vehicle that they want since the ride experiences are so wildly different. Not only that, but they have different height requirements too. Now, before getting in line, you're supposed to put all your belongings inside a locker. There are a few free banks of lockers outside the coaster, but they were broken on the day I visited, so the operators were permitting loose articles to be stored in the ride platform. Now, I'm going to break this review into two parts, one for the spinning car, and one for the hamster wheel. I think the ride experience is so different between the vehicles that it will be easier to discuss the ride in this manner. If you've ridden any of the SBF Visa spinners, the cars will be very familiar to you. You have the back-to-back, outward-facing cars with the T-bar restraints. And I have no issue with those restraints. But I do have the same gripe with the headrests that I have had with all their other spinners. The headrests look like they're padded since they jut outwards, but they're extremely hard and it's exceedingly easy to bang your head against them if you're not careful. Screamin' Centipede begins with a curved booster wheel lift and a curved drop. Starting things off with a curved drop is perfect for a spinning coaster. It really encourages the vehicles to spin, especially if you're riding in an off-balanced car. And because this drop is completely unbanked, you actually get some laterals as well if you're riding towards the back of the train. That's followed by a small bunny hill. The cars are still spinning from the prior drop, and much to my amazement, if you're riding towards the back, you actually get a faint pop of airtime in this hill. You then round a 180 degree turn back into the station. The spinning will intensify during this turn, but unfortunately this turn is a bit shaky. It's not too much of an issue in the spinning cars, but it will be an issue for the hamster wheel, but more on that in a bit. You repeat this course for 3 laps in total. And I have to be honest, this is probably the best SBF Visa spinning coaster layout they've offered to date. The smaller ones are great at spinning, but the layouts offer barely any elements. The larger MX612 model that we see at Jenkins' Boardwalk has a better layout, but that coaster's spinning suffers due to the lack of turns on that particular model. The Screamin' Centipede strikes a perfect balance. The curved drop at the beginning gets your car spinning throughout, and the layout has a bit more speed and thrills with the drop in Bunny Hill. Now let's talk about the reason you're probably here, the hamster wheel car. Once seated in the hamster wheel, you'll be staring at your riding partner unless you're flying solo. You're then locked into place with a very bulky over-the-shoulder restraint. The padding will brush against your ears, which reminded me of the restraints on a Vacoma SLC. I remember seeing videos of the prototype one that was shown on the IAPA trade floor, but these restraints looked even bulkier than those ones. Thankfully, these are the softest over-the-shoulder restraints I have ever seen. They're made of this super soft, compressible foam. They feel more like pillows than restraints and I was certainly thankful for that as I'd find out later. I figured the hamster wheel would result in an unpredictable ride that would differ each time. I figured it would be like an SNS free spin in that regard. 
However, I got the same ride experience every time, and it appeared that others got a near identical ride as well. I believe the hamster wheel truly is free spinning. However, there are strips in the bunny hill that essentially force the first flip. It's not unlike those magnetic fins you find in the SNS free spins that usually cause you to flip. The difference here is that the power of these strips far outweigh any other variable that could impact your ride experience. On all my rides and those I observed, everyone got a fast clockwise flip on the bunny hill, and then the hamster wheel would invert extremely slowly, stalling in many cases, on the far turn before rocking throughout the station. The only difference I saw between rides was how long you'll stall upside down on the far turn and how violently you'd rock through the station. So as you may have surmised, you don't get any rocking or flipping on the curved lift or first drop. The first drop is rather uneventful in the hamster wheel as you're already at the bottom before the rest of the train disengages from the lift, so you get no laterals or forces on that particular element. The star of the ride is that flip you get on the first bunny hill. It is fantastic. You are absolutely thrown into this flip, especially if you left the station in reverse so you travel in the direction of the flip. It felt similar to the flip you get on the first drop of an SNS free spin. The wheel then will stall you upside down, giving you a ton of hang time. Normally, I like hang time, but there's a big flaw here. You get that hang time during a completely unbanked and shaky turn. So you get this uncomfortable combination of laterals while you're suspended upside down and head banging. Again, the restraints are thankfully very well padded, but it's still an unpleasant situation having your head jostled while you're stuck in the inverted position. So what would I rate the Screamin' Centipede? Going in, I thought I would much prefer the hamster wheel version. It seemed much more unique and wild. However, I only slightly preferred the hamster wheel side, mostly because of the aforementioned comfort issue. That final turn really deterred my whole ride experience. Ultimately, I will give this coaster a 4 out of 10. If you ride in the spinning cars, this is probably the best SBF Visa spinner by a slim margin. The layout induces a lot of spinning, and the bunny hill is unique to this particular version. But if you ride in the hamster wheel, you get one amazing flip, but it comes at the price of an uncomfortable finale at the end. Now, what are my thoughts on the big air coaster altogether? Originally, I was excited this coaster was built as it would offer two distinctly different ride experiences in one with the spinning cars and hamster wheel. I thought it was Admiral SBF found a way to combine a family ride with the spinning cars with an extreme flipping ride with the hamster wheel car. However, after riding it, I think the execution is a bit flawed. For a spinner to be effective, you mostly want a twisting layout. You want there to be lateral forces that get the car spinning. For the hamster wheel to be effective, you do not want a twisting layout. And I think both Intamin and SNS realize this on their Zack Spin and Free Spin models. Both these rides are two-dimensional coasters. By that, I mean that they have no conventional left or right turns. Just Raven turns. You just need elevation changes, not lateral forces. In the case of the big air coaster, the lateral forces do nothing to promote flipping, and it makes an uncomfortable ride experience for the riders in that far turn. I honestly think the hamster wheel concept would work better on a shuttle coaster at no turns. Again, I like the concept. And I think you could also incorporate spinning cars if you force the spin like you see on those intimate half pipes. So those are my thoughts on the Screamin' Centipede Big Air Coaster at Tom Foolery's Adventure Park in Round Rock, Texas. Have you ridden one of the Big Air Coasters? What are your thoughts on this concept in general? I would love to hear what you think down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave the video a like and considered subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.